Voiceover questions and answers. Hello, I'm Peter Baker from Voiceover Masterclass. Thank you very much for your questions you're sending in. First one today from Chris Priest. Peter, I'm having so much fun recording thanks to you. I figured out all of the shortcuts on my keyboard for Adobe Audition, tested them myself this evening. But here's the question. I recorded some test monologues. I actually liked one of them quite well. So I normalized and saved the file on my OneDrive files. Can I now import it to Adobe Audition and do some editing on it? Or should that have been done before normalization? Thanks a million. Okay, well, I'm glad you're having fun. Look, normalizing only changes the volume effectively, normally from a safe lower level to avoid distortion on the peaks up to minus three decibels maximum peaks, which is what most studios accept. You're not changing anything apart from that. Now, for every job I do, I store two versions of the file, just normalized, in other words, not mucked about with at all, and then the multiband compressed version, which is my own preset based on Adobe's broadcast preset on multiband compression, which to me sounds better and most of my clients love it as well. And uh, if you haven't tried that one out, please go to Adobe Audition, multiband compression, preset called broadcast, then play around with it and play it back on decent speakers till you find the right thing for you. For me, I turn down the treble a bit, add a little bit of bass and waggle the middle bit and turn the whole volume down. But that's just me. And then you save it as a preset. All right, so that I send to clients. But if they specifically ask for the raw unprocessed file because they want to play around with it, then they get the original just normalized file. It's not processed, it's just normalized. It doesn't matter where you keep the file, cloud or hard disk, SSD, memory stick, it'll all sound the same. Digital is digital. So I hope this helps. It doesn't matter whether it's on the cloud or anything, it won't affect it. Right, moving on to a question from uh, uh, Jennifer Borzumato. Hi, thanks for your course. It was a great help for me to get started. I currently use Upwork and through the stats, I can see my profile is viewed about as often as others, but selected less often. Do you provide profile reviews to provide feedback? I'm wondering what's keeping me from being selected, she says. I think I've done a good job recording and editing my samples, presenting myself well in my bio. So outside of a video, which is my next step, I'm not sure what's holding me back. Okay, well, hello, uh, Jennifer. You're very welcome to send me the link to your Upwork profile. Send it to all of us if you like. We'll all have a look. I'll do my best to give you feedback, but I hope you're not just putting yourself on Upwork. You should never put all your eggs in one basket in life anyway. Upwork for me personally has been very hit or miss. I find mostly there are a lot of chances and dodgy producers posting on there who want quality voiceover work at insultingly low prices. Although I do stay on Upwork because there are regularly some very high value jobs that you find on there, all very strange. By the way, we have in process uh, a new course on Upwork uh, coming up soon, so watch out for that. Now, you say you're going to make a video, but that's not really necessary for Upwork. On the Fiverr platform, you have to make a video because that's one of their rules. But for us voiceovers, it's the voice that matters, it's the audio that's important. So as long as your show reels are up to good quality, you've given a good variety of them, the types of voices. I don't know why you haven't been selected. I'll have a look at your profile. I have found with Upwork that you are more likely to get jobs if you actually search the jobs out there. Quite often, in my experience, clients are lazy. They don't actively look through the existing voiceovers on the site and they just post a request and hope the voiceovers find that request but the use of the right keywords is very important, all right? So you go to looking for work at the top, and with me on Upwork, I put in British voiceover. That's where I find most of my work on Upwork. I haven't got an authentic American accent, of course. Most of the jobs are for American voice talent, so good luck with Upwork, but please spend some time posting yourself on other sites out there, especially Fiverr, of course, where you'll find far more success with selling voiceovers if you know what you're doing. That's why we've created a comprehensive training course just on selling voiceovers 
on Fiverr. Other sites, of course, are there. Invato Studio, Voiva, Voice Jungle, and so on, where you may find success as well. Right, next question from Lauren Turner. In the video clips of you doing voiceovers in your voice booth, we can see the microphone, we can see hand gestures. So we know you aren't holding a script in your hand. No script there. A vocal booth is rather small and you need access to your computer. So how do you read your script? Uh, she says, do you generally have a written script on a stand or are you using a teleprompter or something similar? What's the best practice to avoid clutter and enable access to the computer? Well, basically in the voice booth over there, I just read off a computer screen that's in front of me. Many voice voiceovers take their solid state laptop into the voice booth, one that's totally quiet, no fans or clicking hard drives. For my own booth, I just have a computer screen in front of me. It doesn't make any noise that, but it's connected to my computer about five, six meters away, which is in a soundproofed cupboard. And then in my left hand, I have my mouse, which scrolls up the script while I can do all the actions to help the performance with my right hand. It's as simple as that. So I suppose it is a bit like a teleprompter. That's the great advantage of being a voiceover where you don't have to learn your scripts. In fact, when you get experienced, you'll be able to sight read virtually straight away and even spot mistakes in the script or even the grammar and you can correct them as you go along. You don't have to stop. The human brain is very clever when you train it right. Now in a voice booth where you need to be surrounded by lots of soft things to maintain a dead acoustic, like studio tiles, acoustic blankets, and so on. Yet, I'm talking about a nasty hard screen to read off, but don't worry about it because it's behind the microphone. You should have for voiceover work, a microphone with a heart-shaped polar pattern, which means it hardly picks up anything behind the microphone. So they won't pick up any major reflections of my voice reflecting back off the plastic screen, which is a good 10, 12 inches away from the microphone. Okay, look, I've got to go. That's all for now. If you've got any questions for us at voiceovermasterclass.com, please post them in the comments below and look out for a future video. Thanks for watching. Hey, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below or watch the video once more, just in case there's something you've missed. Now over to my left, you can continue watching. Just click the video you'd like to watch next. And please click the thumbs up icon to let me know if you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. And if you've not done so already, remember to subscribe and click that bell icon so you don't miss any of my new videos.